Hey YouTube, this is Marcus, or Gary One with another video. Today we're going to ground my CB radio antenna. It has not been grounded for some time now. Uh, I did a video, I believe, on how I've got this set up. This is my CB radio antenna. And uh, this is an Antron 99 with a ground plane kit. Grounding it to a grounding rod, like I'm going to do here in a second, is not necessary for the antenna to function properly. But uh, it is a lightning safeguard. And I've got myself an 8 foot grounding rod that I think I'm just going to sink right down in the ground, right here at the base of the mast here. And I've got 15 feet of number 4 bare copper wire, a self tapping screw, and everything. And we're going we're gonna to ground her right here. We're going to ground it to the conduit because the conduit itself also serves as a ground connection. But since the lower portion here is a wooden 4x4, the grounding stops there. You know, there is no path to earth. So we're going to go ahead and continue from the bottom of the conduit here to a grounding rod. I'm going to go ahead and grab this bin here. I had it sitting out here yesterday for something else. And we're going to put it about here ish because as I lay this down you see the ground plane radials stick out I'm gonna need something to lay the four before on up close to the conduit uh, to keep it off the ground so I don't squish and possibly break my ground plane radials all right so here's the hardware we got we got a post driver our wood maul we've got our eight foot copper plated steel grounding rod we've got 15 feet of number four bare copper wire We've got our cordless drill, hammer. The cordless drill has got the torx head bit for taking out the screws. Uh, we've got our little crimp on uh, terminal connector for the end of the copper wire. And we have the clamp for the grinding rod itself. And we have one large self tapping screw that's going to go through this and into the conduit and then once everything's put together I'm going to cover all the connections with uh, some uh, dielectric grease to keep the moisture out and I'm thinking about since the opening in this is much larger than the ground wire that's going into it and, and both surfaces are copper I'm thinking about filling the cavity after I've crimped it with the hammer I'm thinking about filling the cavity with solder and heating it up with a propane torch and melting solder in there and that should give it a really good uh, electrical and mechanical connection. Now the first order of business is actually to get the grinding rod into the ground. I'm basically going to split the difference between these two fence posts and just sink it down say seven feet leave 12 inches sticking up so I have room for the clamp and everything and then I'll put like a pop can or something over the end of it so that if somebody were to fall on top of it uh, you know, they wouldn't be impaled by the grounding rod. Uh, the end is pointed, but it'll be flattened out by the time it's down on the ground anyway. Alright, grounding rod's in the ground. I've got just enough poking up that I've got enough room to work. Stick a pop can and a flag on it to mark it, and we can weed it around it. All right, next order of business is to lower the antenna.
and that's the whole reason I put my antenna up like I did. I can take it down by myself and work on it. Alrighty, next, let's take this guy and the wire and connect them. All right, let's take one end of the wire and I'm gonna stick it in here as far as it'll go. And then It's crimped in there, but let's try something else now. See, there's there's still a gap between that connector and the ground wire. And so what I'm going to try to do, instead of just stuffing it full of dielectric grease to keep the moisture out, we're going to use a propane torch and some solder if it'll work. And now, what'll happen with this solder, if I just take a torch straight to it, it's so... This is made for electronic stuff. Even if I turn the, the heat down, you see, it just blows it away. So what I'm going to try to do, shove it down in here, and then heat up the connector itself. There it goes. There's that flux boiling off. There we go. So let's do the other side now. And that will make a, a better electrical connection, and B, will help keep moisture out. Oh, it was already filling up on that side. Bam. Done. We'll let that cool for a second. Now the next order of business is to take the connection we just made and to actually connect it to the mast here. And this is a self-tapping screw, so it's actually gonna cut into this galvanized steel, which should, again, make a very strong electrical connection. There we go. Now, before I continue, I'm going to slather some dielectric grease around here so that no moisture can get in between these at a later date and start corrosion. That's good and tight. Alright, next we're going to zip tie this into position. Now it's important to remember that dielectric grease is actually an insulator. So although it is useful for keeping water out, you want to make sure that you tighten your connections tight enough that they're able to overcome that dielectric grease and make good contact. Alrighty, so we cracked part of our clamp here, tightened down on this screw a little bit too tight. I didn't realize how soft that was. We've got our multimeter here, so we're going to check for continuity. And what I'm looking for is continuity from, uh, let's find some exposed copper down here, just in the ground. I'm looking for continuity from there to the wire, which we do have. All right, now we need to check for continuity between the copper here and the galvanized steel conduit. Now there I'm looking for an impedance change because you've got a change in materials, but Alright, and now what we want to look for 
is continuity between the conduit and the outer shell of our coaxial cable. So we have, this is the conduit and the outer collar. We do have continuity. All right. So that means that from the grounding rod to the coax, we have continuity. What that means is that from the radio to the grounding rod is properly grounded because the radio is grounded through the shield and outer collar of the coax. I just had a random thought, so I figured some of you on the internet may have that same random thought. Marcus, if you're so nuts about clean electrical connections and dielectric grease, why don't you have something here? Well, here's why. Dielectric grease is a grease. It is. It does lubricate a little bit. It, that's not its primary purpose, but it is slippery. This is a load-bearing gr friction connection between the conduit and this mast. Now, the conduit is galvanized steel, so it's nickel-plated. The mast here of the antenna itself is aluminum. So neither one of these, really, within reason, are going to corrode on their own. And if I notice corrosion that would affect electrical conductivity, I'll just come out here and clean them. But if I were to put dielectric grease between these two, that would increase the chances of wind causing it to cant and maybe even break something or fall over. So because neither of these are terribly prone to corrosion on their own, I haven't worried about putting dielectric grease here. Also, for those of you who might be thinking about grounding your system but you don't have, you know, bare copper wire, here's a little bit of experience from my part why I spend $45 uh, on the equipment to ground it the way I did today. I tried grounding mine with a steel, like, coal mine roofing bolt and an extension cord that I cut the ends off of and twisted all three wires together. It worked for a little while, but you run into two problems. Number one, steel in the ground rusts very quickly and that rust will act as a quasi-insulator. Number two, any kind of coated copper, see copper itself is going to oxidize in oxygen and water, but once you've got it, it, as long as you can keep it, keep the ends in an electrical connection, it'll be alright. But uh, when it's coated, what, the problem I had was one day I was doing some antenna maintenance and I was I ran a conductivity test between uh, my antenna and my grinding rod and I had none and I noticed the ends of the copper that I had stripped off the extension cord was solid black so I took it loose and the wires just broke in my fingers and so I started cutting back and cutting back and cutting back trying to find fresh unoxidized copper and what had happened was well one I didn't use dielectric grease on the ends but what had happened was water had gotten between the copper and that PVC jacket on the extension cord and sat there through the whole length of that cord and oxidized every bit of the copper in that extension cord so that it was it was completely useless it lost all electrical conductivity so if you're going to ground your system you need to use a, a copper plated rod or just copper rod and bare copper wire because if you use coated copper wire in the weather and you don't do something to keep that water from getting inside the jacket it will rot your ground wire so now we just stand it back up and put the screws back in it Alrighty, she looks pretty straight to me. If anything, it might be leaning a little bit this way. But, let's see here. It is leaning 
very slightly toward the house but it is leaning very slightly toward the house but the, the amount that would make a difference to make it perfect is that so I'm gonna call that straight enough all right let's check this side That one looks pretty well perfect to me. So I'm gonna call that done. And the other question, does the antenna look crooked as a dog's hind leg from a distance? It looks good to me. So let's back up a little bit here, look at it from another angle or two. Uh, you guys can't see it for the trees. But it looks fine to me. Looks pretty good. All right, so now let's make sure everything is working fine on this end. Channel one should be just about flatline standing wave. Channel 40, recalibrate it. Non-existent, almost non-existent on channel 40. So we're doing pretty good. Everything's working fine. Standing wave is right where it should be. Alright, so I think I've been pretty productive. We got the antenna uh, properly grounded. To reiterate, this type of grounding is not necessary for this antenna to function. This is a lightning safeguard and a static dissipation device for me. I have noticed, me personally, that the amount of white noise I get goes down a little bit when there's a grounding rod in the ground. I also don't get zapped when I touch the radio if there's a grounding rod in the ground attached to it. And the biggest reason is I've got a big antenna sticking up in the air with a wire ran into my house. Now, to be fair, there's a lot of trees that are taller than it around, but lightning doesn't care. I've got an electrical conductor stuck up in the air with a wire ran into the house. And so my thought process is that if it gets struck by lightning, yeah, my radio is toast probably burn my coax in two, uh, but hopefully most of the energy will see that four gauge wire and eight foot grounding rod as a shorter, easier path to earth than the coax that goes into my radio, especially since the outside of my actual antenna is fiberglass. So, you know, hopefully that will divert most of the energy from a lightning strike into the grounding rod and not into the house. So I just wanted to record the process of grounding my CB radio at what is uh, now my forever home. So if you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, suggestions, please feel free to post them in the comment section below. And as always, this is Marcus out. Y'all have a good one.